Hello, welcome to this 1000 subscriber Q&A special by me, Saga. All right, so I'm gonna go through some questions that you guys have asked me. And I also have some questions that I've thought might be interesting to answer because I've had many multiple repeated people asking me the same questions. So yeah, let's get into it. First question we have is by Aviation Trip Reports. What different fields can you go into with an aerospace engineering degree? Well, I'd say if you've done an aerospace engineering degree, you're pretty much open to whatever field you want to go into. Um, so for example, myself, I did an aerospace engineering degree, but I've now gone into the software engineering field. Um, you can do an aerospace engineering degree and go into mechanical, electrical engineering careers. Um, you can go into consultancy, you can go into investment banking as well if you want. But um, I think the important thing is, um, it's not necessarily what degree you do, which determines which field you go into. It's, it's like all your other extracurricular stuff that you've done, maybe your internships that helps you then get into the careers that you want to go into after studying aerospace engineering. Next up, we have a question by Mark Ju Yi Huang. Huang? Maybe that's, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, apologies if I haven't. So what's the difference between aerospace engineering in the US and the UK? Um, <clears throat> I personally have never studied in the US, so I don't know from a first-hand perspective what aerospace engineering is like over there. But I think the biggest difference is the internship opportunities you would have if you are in the USA compared to in the UK. Um, so it's not necessarily the differences in the course, but I'd say it's the differences in opportunities you get outside of just the classroom, I'd say. Um, USA is like probably the best place to study aerospace engineering, if anywhere in the world. Uh, primarily because of the large companies um, that you know, dominate the aerospace scene are all based in the USA. So a lot of universities have connections with the top companies like SpaceX, Air, uh, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, um, and pretty much any of the coolest space startups in the world. So that's probably the biggest difference between studying in the UK and the US. Um, but I would also say some of the U universities in the USA, if you go to like the Ivy League schools, they're gonna have so much money. So their facilities for aerospace are likely to be like way better than any of the universities in the UK. Um, so yeah, that's what I would say is the biggest difference between studying in the UK and the US. Cool. So next up, we have a question by MT or EMP7Y. Um, so the question is, what are the ways you can use your aerospace engineering degree in a computer science related job? It's a good question because I studied aerospace and now in a computer science related job. Um, I'd say there's not like, um, a huge amount from the like content or technical side of the aerospace degree you can use in your um, computer science based job. However, I'd say the, the method in which you are to approach and solve questions and um, try and try and problem solve is very transferable. Um, there's a part of aerospace I remember where we had to do root cause analysis, which is asking, you know, why something's broken, why did it break, what was the reason for it. That's very much the same that you'd have to do in a computer science related job, because if you have some, um, say, piece of software that doesn't work, you have to figure out why it doesn't work, and then you have to figure out why that went wrong, and then so on and so on. So um, I'd say there are some transferable skills, but they're generally the generic engineering sort of mindset type of skills that you would transfer rather than, you know, yes, this is like how thermodynamics works and you can't really translate that into software engineering. Okay, Mr. Rorden, Rord, Rorden? Yeah, Mr. Rorden has asked, where are you from? Good question, where am I from? So um, I was actually born in the UK. Um, Hence, maybe, I don't know if you could tell by my accent. I don't even know if I have a British accent or what, because I have been confused as an Australian and American and an Indian before, so who knows. Um, so yeah, I was born in the UK. I was born in a medium-ish sized city called Stoke-on-Trent, which is up north. Um, that's where I've grew, grow, grown up since I was zero um, until 18. Uh, when I was 18, I moved to Sheffield temporarily-ish to study um, at university. Um, and yeah, so pretty much all my life, well, actually all my life, apart from when I did a study abroad year, I've been living in the UK. Um, so that's where I'm from. <laughs> um, okay, next question. Mr. Rorden has also asked, 
what's my education? I presume that means what I've studied dur during my life. So, you know, in um, primary school, studied about the kings and queens of the UK. No, I'm kidding. So I'll go into the more specific stuff. So GCSE level, which is I'm guessing what Mr. Rawdon means. Um, I took 10 GCSEs. Um, I did maths, English language, English literature, um, Spanish, geography, religious studies, physics, chemistry, biology, um, and computer science. So those are all my GCSEs that I did. Um, for my GCSEs, I got five A stars, one A, three Bs and a C. Um, and most of the A's and A stars were in like the science related subjects because yeah, I'm a nerd. Um, my lowest scoring subjects were like Englishes. Even though I was born in the UK, I just hated English in general because it's just shit, but that's a different story. Um, and then, so for my A-levels, then I went to do and did maths, further maths, physics and computer science in my AS like level. And then after my first year of A-levels, I dropped computer science and carried on with maths, further maths and physics, which then led me on to doing aerospace engineering at university. So that has been my education, I suppose. Actually, I should mention for A-levels, I got three A's, A in, well, maths, further maths and physics. And then I studied aerospace engineering. Um, I finished aerospace engineering with a first class um, integrated masters in aerospace engineering. And here I am today. So that is my education. Next question we have by Kavini. So as an aerospace undergrad, should I continue with academia and get a PhD or go into industry? Um, well, this is kind of, this is a good question because yeah, there are two routes to actually explore once you've graduated, which is academia or industry, unless unemployment is the third route, but hopefully none of us go into that route. Um, or you could be starting your own company. So you have four routes, academia, continue doing PhD, go work for someone, start your own company or sit around being unemployed. Hopefully you don't choose the last one. Um, yeah, but okay, so this question is between choosing a job or going into academia. And I'd say um, both have their benefits for sure. Um, so going into a job, will really help you understand what it's like working in industry because um, an industry environment is very much more profit driven compared to academia where it's much more knowledge driven. Um, so I'd say if you want to become a really good engineer in industry, I'd say steer away from academia, um, primarily because the way you approach um, trying to figure out problems um, in industry is going to be very different to how you're approaching to solve problems in academia because in academia you try and find all the information you can and then determine what's wrong whereas in industry you don't have the resources or time to do that sort of analysis so you have to be more particular and more specific in terms of how you figure out what's wrong um, the other thing is if you're not having a paid phd it can be very expensive um, so i'd also recommend if you are to do a phd make sure it is always funded um, I wouldn't personally choose to do a PhD if it wasn't funded purely because the benefit of a PhD um, does not like um, it, it is not as much as you're paying to do the PhD in essence. Um, one of the reasons why I would do a PhD is if I wanted to move to a different country. I'd say a PhD is a really easy way to get your foot in the door pretty much into a country. So for example, if you are from a different country and want to try and get into the USA um, engineering market, then doing a PhD in America might be worthwhile because you're going to end up having a better chance of getting a job in the USA after you've done that. And also then in turn, becoming a citizen of the US and then having the opportunity to work for cool companies like SpaceX. Um, However, that's not the only route to get into USA. You can be a really good engineer outside of the country and then get headhunted or apply for roles in the USA at a later date. And once you're more um, qualified and skilled, you'll be able to walk right in and it'll be like, yeah, here's a job for you. So that's the other way to do it. And I think um, sometimes people say like, if you've done a PhD, it's very hard to find a job afterwards because people may view you as overqualified I don't know how much truth there is into that, um, but I do think sometimes it can be tricky then to find jobs because 
you know, companies might be expecting you to want more money because you've just done a PhD and, you know, you don't have the practical skills or the industry skills to really be worthwhile that much money. So, yeah, I'd say consider why you want to do a PhD. If you genuinely just want to go into academia, yeah, PhD is the best route. But if you want to go into industry, I'd say working at a company first is probably the best thing you could do, um, primarily because you'll learn like the really industry specific skills. All right, so um, I have some more questions that are like more FAQ based questions, not asked by anyone in particular, but I've been asked these questions repeatedly on Instagram and so on. So hopefully this uh, helps more people out in understanding, you know, some of the answers I have. So can an international student get jobs in aerospace in the UK? Um, I asked, I've got, I've got a little bit. I have been asked this question many a times, uh, so here's my answer, yes, but um, if you're an international student, you're not going to likely to get a job in defense um, or space potentially. So yeah, the only option really, if you want an aerospace related job would be in civil aviation, um, which is doable, but is competitive given the fact that it's only realistically your it's only your choice it's only uh, realistically it's your only choice so that's why um, it might be quite competitive because you're going to have home students and international students both applying for that sort of role so yeah it's possible but it, it might be tricky okay next question i have is should i do a levels or btec after doing gcsc if i want to get into engineering at university um, i'd say definitely do a levels because um, most more universities value a levels to be honest um, and I think uh, if you want to go to the top universities doing a levels is the more secure route because they're more um, more adopted as being um, more difficult to to achieve so I think universities respect people who do a levels over people who do B -techs, to be honest um, not saying B -techs are bad I'm just saying that's just the sentiment out there. What do I think about degree apprenticeships? Uh, degree apprenticeships can be really valuable actually. Um, unfortunately, when I was choosing what to do after A-levels, there wasn't many great degree apprenticeships out there. Um, but nowadays, I think degree apprenticeships are becoming a increasingly better thing because you get to do degree apprenticeships at top tier companies and get a you know somewhat valuable degree. Um, but I think the primary thing is that you're learning practical skills and also you're being paid at the same time so it's a really cost effective way to you know make the most of your time um, after a levels so yeah i'd say doing a degree apprenticeship is definitely a viable option to consider especially if you're wanting to do engineering because university is okay um, but i'd say you really do lack the practical skills if you've gone down the university route and um that's why I'd say I'm, I'm probably a better software engineer than I am an aerospace engineer, primarily because I know more practical skills in software than I do in aerospace engineering, admittedly. Another question I get asked is, do you need to be good at maths to study aerospace engineering? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, there's a lot of maths involved in aerospace engineering, so it would help a lot if you are good at maths um, before you joined aerospace engineering. Um, but I'd say you can learn you can learn how to do maths whilst in university, though it all depends on how how much time and effort you want to put into it. Because if you're not really great at understanding maths in a core level, you might struggle trying to understand it when it's contextualized with things. So. Yeah, I definitely say if you're not great at maths, try and work on that the most before you come into study aerospace engineering. Next question is, should I learn to code at university even if I'm studying aerospace or mechanical engineering? Um, I'd say yes again to this one because I think coding is one of those skills where every engineer should know it because it definitely helps you out a lot, both in terms of your ability to solve problems, but also, you know, if you think about it, more and more things are becoming more dependent on software so for example in engineering right the people who make the CAD software or your CFD software are going to be software engineers right um, and you use that as an aerospace engineer or mechanical engineer um, and if you're able to understand hard tech like so aerospace and mechanical and also are able to write software 
then you're in a really good position because you're able to write software to somewhat reduce the number of um, tasks aerospace and mechanical engineers have to do because the software can just do it for you. Um, there's actually a company I've had a look at called Monolith AI and they're working on a solution to use artificial intelligence to even further aid hard tech engineers to optimize designs. So for example, if you want to design like a, a turbine blade or something, you can ask this um, piece of software in a, I don't know how it specifically works, but it's, a, it's supposed to give you a CAD model, I think, of the, the most uh, optimized, say, turbine blade for the scenario you want to um, use it. So that's pretty insane. It's like taking your um, back in the day engineers on the drawing board, replacing them with CAD software, and now you're replacing even like the people who are doing CAD with just some AI, which is incredible. Um, so yeah, I'd say definitely learn software because it will give you the agility that you need to succeed in your career in later in life. So there we have it. That is my 1000 subscriber Q&A. Um, sorry I was not animated in this video because my throat's about to die. <clears throat> but hopefully you learned a lot from the video and um, I'll see you in another one in the future. So see you around guys.